So prescribed fire in, in our parks, we use it for a few different reasons. Uh, number one is we use it uh, to promote the growth of the native tall grass prairie that we're trying to bring back. The Washington County Parks Department is in the process of restoring tracts of land back to its natural state as it existed before European settlers began to change the landscape. For the 1847 public land survey uh, notes for this park, it's described as uh, timber scattering, burr, and black oak. Basically that's saying that there was this savanna, big burr oak trees that grow up in an open environment, yet is maintained through the use of fire, which the Native Americans used not only in, in hunting game, but also that created this whole ecosystem of fire-dependent species on, on the land. Back in the 1990s, they seeded this site. Uh, formerly, it was an ag field and with cropland uh, and grazing and things of that sort. And after they took it out of production, they seeded it with native grasses and native flowers. Prairie restoration includes many parts to make it work and even affects the smallest of inhabitants. They found ants to actually uh, bring in flower seeds, which we call forb. And that form uh, depends upon the overwintering. So the, the ant grabs the seed inside the prairie and brings it into the colony and actually overwinters it. And that provides the germination it needs to either germinate on that mound or outside of it. As part of the restoration, prescribed burns are being used to help promote growth of native species, while at the same time controlling that of invasive species. And so that fire actually removes all the top growth that is present in the prairie from the previous growing season and returns all those nutrients back into the soil. A lot of people don't know that the prairie, most of the prairie's plants, all, all the plants you see above here is just a little part of the whole uh, system below it. And there's prairie plants that their root systems go anywhere between three to 16 feet deep and they're filtering water um, and any pollutants out of that. Lots of planning and preparation go into ensuring that the burn is safe and effective. Before we even get out here and are able to burn, uh, it starts at with me identifying where and when we're going to do that burn. We go to the Minnesota DNR and we actually get variance uh, approvals from the region-wide uh, forester for this area. That forester will then review our burn plans and actually come out to the site and ensure that they're safe to conduct a fire in. So the day of the burn, uh, we meet out on site the night before and during the night I'm checking the weather to make sure that the forecast is uh, good for a, a burn day. We don't burn when there's 20 mile an hour, 30 mile an hour winds. We're only burning if it's less than 15. Uh, we're making sure that the humidity is, it's not too high where it's really hard to start a burn, but it's also not below 20 where we have a really bad fire hazard. On there. At that time, the crew is already mobilizing out on site. They have the water trucks filled with water, um, and they have all the equipment that we're going to need to conduct the day's burns. In addition to our mowed turf trails that we have, we actually have a, a staff member go and cut down more of the prairie adjacent to those trails to establish a burn break. And that burn break doesn't necessarily stop the fire, it just gives us a little more time to ensure that it stays contained. And that's where we'll have a, a truck come by and run what's called a wet line to wet that vegetation so the fire doesn't cross. But there's all these different teams of, of people doing different things. Uh, myself and, and my supervisor were uh, working as the burn boss and weather observer, making sure that the weather wasn't changing on us and making sure everyone needed to be where they were at. Uh, and then you had a ignitions team, you call it, the guy with the fire torch who is out there actually lighting the fire. In front of him and behind him is a wet line team. 
So they're putting a wet line right, up, right behind uh, the drip torch or ahead of it, depending on uh, that specific crew. And then behind them, the next check is uh, another vehicle where they have water in the back of the UTV and they're checking to make sure that no fire is crossing into that fire break. So there's all these different checks in, term of the day, in terms of the burn day to make sure that that fire isn't escaping. An oak savanna is not complete without oak trees. We have probably 100 or so bur oak seedlings um, throughout the prairie here and we're hoping that we can at least get 50% of them to live and make it to those big uh, bur oak trees that you often see when you come across a savanna landscape. All this work goes to help protect a disappearing part of our local ecosystem. These types of plant communities of prairie are actually very rare in this state. I mean, what remains, it's like less than 1% of what actually existed on the land prior to uh, European settlement. So if, if you like to see the birds, the bees, and the other pollinators, and amphibians and wildlife, they depend on these on this type of ecosystem that we're standing in.